Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Injured Gadgets iPad Mini first and second generation complete digitizer LCD removal and reinstallation guide. Please note that third gen installation for the iPad Mini is slightly different. Uh, you are going to require an eye opener, we carry this on our website, or a blow dryer or a heat gun. Uh, today we're going to be using a heat gun to heat up the sides, but uh, if you don't have a heat gun, you can buy the eye opener off our website. We partnered up with iFixit to, create, uh, to sell some great tools. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and start. So we're going to use a heat gun. If you have a heat gun that allows you to change the temperature, we recommend between 180 to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have one that goes on low or high setting, go low setting and stay about a half to a one inch distance away from the screen. If you're too close, you can end up burning the LCD doing this. Obviously, we sell replacement LCDs. However, why break it if it's not already broken? So, we're going to go ahead and heat up these, the sides of the iPad. You don't want to heat up the actual middle of the glass, you just want to heat up the black borders. That's where the adhesive is on the iPad. So, once you loosen up that adhesive, you're going to be able to get in there and remove the glass from the... Alright, so to get kind of between the glass, I use an ISSMO tool. I am going to speed this up a little bit for you guys. Um, once you've actually got the tool in there, the glass is going to come off a lot easier. It's going to kind of slide through. Now, unlike the iPad 1, well not the 1, excuse me, the 2, the 3, and the 4, there are no cables along the sides. So, you don't have to worry about ripping anything as you, as you go along the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and go along the sides of this and just uh, loosen it up, keep on applying additional heat, and it will come off. Okay, obviously if your iPad hasn't been turned off, make sure to turn it off before you ever start to repair. Unfortunately on this iPad, the touch screen wasn't working either after it dropped and broke, so we couldn't really turn it off. So we're going to show you guys how to disconnect the battery, uh, which you want to do anyhow later, but you can only get to the battery once the LCD is off. So anyhow, now we're going to use our MicroPhillips 00 screwdriver. The screwdriver you see here is part of our iFixit 54-bit screwdriver kit. Um, we also have an iPad repair toolkit, which is really all you need. It's got a double zero Phillips screwdriver, it's got a nylon spudger, and a ISSMO like tool. Um, but if you are a repair technician, I do recommend this 54 -bit, bit kit or an additional advanced kit we have. So there's four screws on the sides of the iPad mini. You're going to want to remove these four screws. They're all double zero Phillips screws, and they're in each of the four corners of the iPad mini. Alright, once those are removed, go ahead and use your iSessima or a nylon spudger. Now this part you want to be careful. Um, if you kind of yank the LCD out, you could end up cracking the actual screen. Uh, the LCD is extremely delicate, so take your time kind of releasing this. Go along the sides, be careful. Uh, you don't want to be rough with this at all, so take your time on this and make sure you do not crack the LCD doing this. Honestly, I was a little afraid when I took it out, I thought I heard a crack. I did it, the LCD was fine in the end, but it's still a little nerve wracking. Alright, so once you release the LCD, you're going to see the back cover with a ton of screws. These are all MicroPhillips 00 screws once again. <clears throat> Excuse me, MicroPhillips 00 screws once again. And you're going to remove all of these screws. Alright. Alright, with all those screws removed, go ahead and use your ISSMO tool and remove this little metal shield. Um, I honestly believe this iPad had been repaired before because this shield should not be this difficult to remove. 
so I feel like whoever repaired it before us um, probably did something with the shield uh, when they removed it because this shield was a little messed up. Uh, anyhow, once that shield is removed, you're going to go ahead and remove the three Phillips screws right here covering this silver bracket. Uh, these three screws actually cover up your LCD flex cable as well as your digitizer and touchscreen flex cable. So let's go ahead and remove these three screws. Once they're removed, that little silver shield will come right off. And also it covers up your battery. First thing you want to do here is disconnect the battery. Um, always disconnect the battery. You don't know what you could end up messing up if it wasn't disconnected. Alright, that flex cable right there was the LCD flex cable. And this one right here is the touchscreen glass flex cable. Alright. Okay, once those are disconnected, let's go ahead and get them out of the way. Just put those to the side, including the touchscreen flex cable. And then I'm going to show you guys our, our, our screen and what we're installing. Okay, so on our website we have our premium quality, the IG Ace screens, and then we have just the regular high copies. I always recommend the premium high quality. They're about 50% more expensive, so that's maybe 15, 20 bucks. But they are going to have the magnets installed on them. These help your sleep function work and your smart covers work. They have the camera uh, bracket installed. And of course the home button IC chip is already soldered. Our copy screens have that too, but there's a little bit more work involved. You're going to have to cover up areas with Kapton tape, which is a non-conductive electrical tape so that it doesn't ghost touch. But always buy the premium if you care about your iPad. Uh, that's what I recommend. Um, some repair shop owners buy the cheaper quality one just because they know what areas to cover and what to transfer over. I don't recommend doing it. Alright, go ahead and grab your LCD screen. Use a microfiber cloth, kind of wipe it up. Um, make sure it's clean. You can use some isopropyl alcohol or really any type of alcohol to remove any smudges, dirt, whatever it may be. Uh, that's pretty much what we did here to try and clean this up. Um, as you can see there's like some little smudges on the top. I'm going to use our isopropyl alcohol right here and it'll get rid of those pretty easily. Okay, go ahead and grab your new touchscreen glass. Uh, there's actually double-sided tape already pre-applied here, so you don't have to apply any tape. Uh, so go ahead and release the double-sided adhesive pads. And make sure not to stick this to anything, because it's obviously very sticky. Alright, last thing to note right here is there is a screen protector on the back of the iPad mini along with the front. Uh, it may be hard to find, go ahead and use that nylon spudger, you will get to it, just kind of pry along the edges. Um, but yeah, there is a screen protector there, you want to remove it obviously, otherwise it's going to be stuck under there when you lay your screen down. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and place our screen and LCD and connect them back to the board. If you don't get an easy click here, don't force it down. Make sure the click is easy and like a snap. All right, once your battery connector, LCD connector, and digitizer are all plugged in, let's go ahead and place that little silver bracket down uh, and put the three screws back in. So make sure you plug those three cables in, like I said, and let's go ahead and put these three Phillips double zero screws back in with the bracket. Alright, with those screws plugged in, let's go ahead and put in our metal shield back in. Uh, like I said, this one looks a little bent up. I think this repair had been done before on this iPad, just based on the condition this metal shield was in. Yours probably won't look as, look as bent up. Alright, once that's in, let's go ahead and put our screws back in. Please note, the screws don't go at the very top. Um, I did make a mistake here, and I put the screw in at the very top. The top two screw holes 
um, are actually for the LCD once it's plugged in. Uh, so don't put the screws in at the very top. I made the mistake. I'm going to end up removing those screws a little bit later and putting in them in their corrective spots. Alright, first things first, we're going to go ahead and remove the screws that we accidentally placed and place them in their corrective spots. Please note the top two screws on the right side are the long ones, and on the left side the very top screw is the long one as well. Alright, with all those screws re in place, let's go ahead and put our LCD down. And once that's laid down flat enough, uh, go ahead and put the four double zero Phillips screws in their four corners. Alright, and then go ahead and put your touch screen in place, make sure it's lined up properly, um, and then you can go ahead and power up your iPad mini. Go ahead and test out the home button, the power buttons, the back, uh, well, the slide unlock button. Make sure it's all working before uh, you do anything, obviously. But yeah, you want to go ahead and place your iPad mini down. Please note that if the sides of your iPad mini have been bent in from a drop or something, your glass may not sit properly. You do want to bend those out. If you're a professional, we carry a uh, little corner tool on our website called the Plier Tech, and that can bend those, those out. If not, just use a hammer and a screwdriver. All right, so for all your parts and tools, check us out at InjuredGadgets.com. Please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us here.